Hey Geeks, Mod Tim here coming at you live yet again. Um, so if you guys saw the first time uh, I was coming at you live, but I had some sort of like technical issue and my phone died and then didn't update. So this is why I don't do live videos. Um, so I'm doing another Star Trek review. Uh, this time I'm doing Star Trek The Motion Picture, which came out in 1979. Uh, so we did the original series and then we did the animated series and now this is the next progression because so Kirk's crew did six movies So this is the first one and it's been ten years since the series ended in 1969 and it's been four years since the animated series ended in 1975 um, So it's kind of so it's been quite a while since we've seen Kirk and the crew um, and this is also the first Star Trek series that came out after Star Wars. So now there's actually some competition in the sci-fi field. So that alone, it's, it's all pretty interesting. There's a lot going on with this movie, uh, which is why I decided to do it live, because there's so much to kind of dissect and get into. And I'm hoping some of you viewing this kind of throw out some comments. Because um, like I said, I've never actually done a live video. So now I can kind of see your, your little comments, um, which by the way, I just want to say like, I have a lot of animals. So if you guys start hearing a cat throw up or like one of my dogs start barking, just kind of bear with me and I have a cold. So everything's going against me today. It's kind of a rough day. <coughs> um, so, so like I said, so this is the only live action movie in the seventies and I'm not really big on the, the star dates. Anytime they say star dates in Star Trek, like I'm a big Trekkie. But, um, I'm just like, whatever, it's just random numbers. Um, so that being said, for those that are really into the star dates, evidently this episode takes place just four years after the Turnabout Intruder, uh, which is the last episode of the original series, uh, which is kind of interesting because in this movie, they try very hard to kind of pretend that no time has passed. Whereas with the very next movie in um, The Wrath of Khan, like the crew aging is all part of the plot. So it's kind of interesting how they kind of bring in the different dates for the series. Um, <clears throat> let's see, there's so much to digest. Um, so from the original series, we saw Rand, Yeoman Rand, in season one, which, by the way, I've, I've binge-watched Star Trek multiple, multiple times, but I didn't pay attention to a lot of the little details until I started doing these video diaries for you guys. So we saw Yeoman Rand in the very first season, and then we see Chekhov in season two and season three. Um, and it's kind of interesting, in this movie, they're both here, even though they don't share any scenes together, but Rand is now the transporter chief. And it's just kind of a throwaway line, but when, like, when she first shows up, I'm like, is that her? And then Kirk's like, it's not your fault, Rand. I was like, oh my god, that is her, that's kind of cool. Um, so that's something I never really realized when I first watched this movie, but this movie's so hard for me to get into because it's so slow. Um, I forgot which of the movies, uh... Uh, Kevin Smith did where he talks about he nailed it right on the head where he's like yeah this movie's basically like they got multi-million dollars and it's just like oh we can actually afford good models of the Enterprise like let's do it from this angle okay now let's do it from this angle now let's do it from the overhead and, and that's basically all this movie is uh, the opening credits is they're they're six minutes long the first three minutes is nothing but stars, and then, then you finally start getting the names. But it's so slow, and it's so hard to get into. Um, it's kind of interesting because because they had all of this new money, uh, we were able to see, like, they did a new score. So it wasn't the, the usual 60s, I'm not going to try to hum it, like Star Trek theme song. They, they got a new theme song which Gene Roddenberry actually likes so much that that's the theme song for The Next Generation. So for those that love The Next Generation but have never dealt with Kirk, this is where that got its theme song. Um, and then to kind of further that budget, this is the first time that we've seen the Klingons with the rigid foreheads. Now for me personally, I've always had that suspension of just disbelief that why did they have smooth foreheads in the series and rigid from then on? because they have a bigger budget now. I'm fine with that, I don't care. Um, whereas in Deep Space Nine, they kind of touch on it where they go back in time and they see the smooth ones and they're like, Worf, what's up with that? And they're like, we don't talk about that. And then in Enterprise, you actually start to get that, uh, 
augmentation and a virus and stuff where yet again for me like I was like that's not needed like who cares but it's it's progressed even in discovery where we've seen the Klingons change yet again they're they're starting like oh we we cut our hair because we were in war who cares like really it, it doesn't bother me <coughs> Um, but the, the budget for this movie really made a difference um, because for when Robert Wise directed it, he really wanted to kind of bring some new angles to it. That's why they wear like the gray pajama pants and not the vibrant yellow, blue, and red shirts. <coughs> Sorry, cold. <coughs> so like I said, um, which I don't know, a lot of people know this, but Robert Wise directed this and that's the guy that directed The Sound of Music. And... Um, uh, West Side Story. Um, so, like, it, it's kind of an interesting choice that they went with Robert Wise um, because he's not really, like, a sci-fi director, so I don't know why they went with that. Whereas with the next movie, with The Wrath of Khan, and they got Nicholas Meyer, that was brilliant. That, that was great. But for this one, there's a lot of choices because this movie, it really is just a product of the 70s. Uh, like I said, this is the only movie, or the only live-action Star Trek that came out in the 70s. And you got like a horror with her fro, and you got D Force Kelly Bones uh, with his awesome beard, um, and now we see Scotty with the mustache. So we've seen a lot of changes through the cast, but it's it's a lot of stuff that wasn't really needed. So it was kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> to kind of go back to the Klingons, um, so we finally see the Klingons come in. They're like it's the opening scene. It's the only scene they're in. And they're, they're speaking Klingonese, which is kind of interesting because I think this is the first time we've actually heard the language. And that language was actually developed by James Duhon, the guy that plays Scotty. Um, how he got roped in that, I'm not actually sure, but they, they kind of went to him. And so they're actually speaking English in those first scenes. And then James Duhon came in and is like, oh, uh, how can we get it to change the language but still have them, like, the lip movements work. And so he, like, came up with syntax and all sorts of stuff, which, when I was in college, I was that nerd that could actually speak Klingon. Like, I, I took a poetry class, and I would write poetry in Klingon. Like, I, I, it was bad. It was really bad. Um, but it's a use-it-or-lose-it type thing, and since I didn't really have anybody else to talk with, it just kind of faded away, which is probably for the best. Um... So it's kind of interesting. And also that Klingon captain, who we only see for like two minutes, uh, is played by Mark Leonard, who we first saw is as um, the Corbomite Maneuver, as the very first Romulan. And then he's best known as playing Sarak, uh, the actor who plays uh, Spock's father. Um, he plays Spock's father. And, um, so, and then he portrays that role several times, in the movies and in The Next Generation. It's having connection errors again, I'm getting nervous. Um, so he's the first actor that actually covers different species in a row. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And I didn't even recognize him, to be honest. I had to see him in the cast before I actually got it. <coughs> um, and another connection to the original series that this movie has, um, Decker, the main character for this movie, um, supposedly he's remain he's related to Commodore Decker from the Doomsday Machine episode. Um, it's not clear in the movie other than their last names, but I guess in the script, um, it was, it was blatant that this is actually Decker's son, Commodore Decker's son. Um, so I kind of wish they had more of that connection because that would have been kind of interesting. Um, going down my list. Uh, so towards the end of the movie, uh, I actually really like this. Um, when V'ger's like threatening to like attack, uh, Spock says that any show of resistance would be futile, which I love because when we get to the next generation, Gene Roddenberry was still pretty heavily involved in the first couple of seasons. And then when we see the Borg, um, he was involved in that. And so I feel like this is that first couple of seeds relating to the Borg and his newest, like his big bad, if you will, um, to throw out a Buffy reference. Um, and there's actually been some fan fiction and some some theories out there that V'ger is like the ancestors of the Borg or the the whatever alien life form that V'ger had collided with was the Borg. So there's there's definitely some Borg stuff going on with this episode. Uh, yes, Josh, I did write a sauna in Klingon. Um, 
so and uh like this whole this whole movie to me was just a remake of the changeling episode because if you look at it you have a satellite from earth collide with an alien life form they kind of meld together and they're looking for their creator that's the plot for the changeling which if you go back and look at that video i mention it and that's the plot for this movie so i felt like gene roddenberry wasn't really trying or stretching his creative writing with this movie um which i guess when they were making this he kept interfering like he would be like oh no 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 let's do this oh no no let's do that um whereas when they got to the wrath of khan um <clears throat> they basically told gene roddenberry to like get out like he he had interfered too much and so he was just an executive producer for that uh, which just kind of shows you, like, if you if you get too involved, like, bad things can happen. <coughs> I'm trying, but, like, the dog just keeps running away. Like, come here, little bear. Um, like, my special co-host little bear for today. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I felt like this episode was interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of nice to see the crew evolving, which is something you don't see in a lot of shows. Like, we finally see Admiral Kirk and Commander Spock and stuff. Um, and it's something we go through on in the series where we'll finally, we'll get to the point where we see Captain Sulu and stuff. Um, but overall this, so that's kind of all of the random trivia facts that I think I have. As for the movie itself, God, this movie was so hard to get into. Yeah, you didn't like it either, did you? Um, it's just, it's really slow. It's really boring. I, I respect this movie because like I said, this is the first time that Star Trek had like, millions of dollars to kind of do what they want and like I said at this point Star Wars had come out so they did have competition but it's just um it's it's really slow and it's really boring and they're they're just wearing like gray pajamas throughout the whole movie it's I yeah I know it, it shouldn't be funny, but you watch this movie, and you're like, what were they thinking? Um, it's kind of impressive that they even got The Wrath of Khan to come out because of how bad this movie was, like, recepted. Um, but it, it's, it is what it is. It's a, it's a product of its time, like I said before, with uh, the hair and the outfits and the acting. Um, I especially like uh, you finally see Bones where he's just like, oh, no, like, I don't want my molecules scrambled. And they finally pull him up. Uh, Ran pulls him up. But, yeah, this, this whole movie itself, it's, it was rough. It was difficult to get through. Um, Little Bear didn't like it either. Um, see, just making sure I cover all of my stuff. Because there's, like I said, there's a lot to cover in this movie. <laughs> So I'm reading some of the comments as you guys pop up, so that's kind of fun. <clears throat> um, oh, and like like I said, so like, not only is this movie really slow, but like as I said a couple minutes ago, like six minutes, six minutes of opening credits and three minutes of just stars. Like, I remember when I was a kid and I used to watch this, like I would just fast forward through the different parts and be like, nope, okay, let's watch this. Um, so that was, it's it's rough. It's a, it's, it's a rough movie to get through. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed these movies, um, cause at this point, 80, this is the 85th movie, so, or video that I have recorded for you guys, so I'm really hoping you guys enjoy these. Um, the crew, Kirk's crew did six live act, or did six live action movies, and I think I'm gonna try to do them live, um, just because there's so much to cover, and clearly my phone freaks out if at anything over five minutes. Um, but I hope you guys, I'm going to leave this, I'm going to save it and post it so you guys can comment and then I can like reply to your comments. Um, so if you guys have seen this, let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, cause like I said, it's rough. It's, it's a difficult movie to get through. I can't imagine sitting in a theater. Like I, I'm pretty sure I would just fall asleep. Like they just done. Um, <clears throat> but I think this is also, if you guys have ever heard of the, the even odd theory for Star Trek for a while that. Um, the odd movies are awful. They're, they're, they're really bad. But then the even movies are really good because one sucks, but two is great. Three sucks, but four is great. And it, well, bless you. Um, but so let me know what you guys think about that theory. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. I hope you guys, I'm sorry for all the technical difficulties that I've been having with the live footage. Um, but let me know in the comments below what you guys think about um, the motion picture. 
and then hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow for the Wrath of Khan. Uh, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.